Okay, uh, thank you for the students joined in today's session. Today, the aim is to discuss the female urology scenarios. But uh, if you have any questions on any other tables also, we can discuss. Yes, Fahad, go ahead with the question which you started. Uh, one question in the previous uh, exam, it's uh, what's the treatment of atrophic uh, testis uh, after orchidopexy and 12 year old uh, uh, boy? Uh, is it uh, uh, orchidopexy uh, uh, remove or uh, fix it or uh, uh, leave it? Sorry. Okay, that's a very important question. As you mentioned, uh, the evidence or the literature is not very really clear. So there is a possibility of uh, fusion. So it's good that if you could accumulate these questions and ask in these sessions so that we can clarify all the doubts. In fact, we can run a full session on just clarifying doubt alone because sometimes close to the exam, you are reading more, you get more doubts. Okay, regarding that question, most probably the atrophic Testis is because the caution was intervened quite late or the patient sent it to the hospital quite late. That's why in the consent orchidopexy for suspect caution, we always consent stating that possibility of detest and removal of the testes, possibility of atrophic testes in long term, and also the possibility of chronic testicular pain. Testes is highly vascularized and highly neurologically supplied organ. So if there is a problem, uh, any geoprotection in vascularity or pushing or twisting, it can cause sometimes chronic pain. And the chronic pain is very difficult to treat and uh, the pain won't help. Uh, and the itself could lead a patient to ask for removal of the test. And the surprising thing is this more become psychosomatic disease that even a testicular removal patient may have some pain. So these are all the aspects of it. For the answer to your question, yes, sometimes even after epoxy, the testes may not survive, though the vascularity is okay on the table and you try to do a three-point fixation or subdotter station. On long term, the testes can slowly go for OP. These patients, if the opposite this is normal, at least can explain to the patient uh, you should not have any problems with uh, lead testosterone levels, problems, uh, problems with uh, libido and erection, and uh, there should not be any problem in being a father. You can be sure if the opposite testes is normal. Now, if the patient is asymptomatic without any symptoms, only unilateral testes which had orchidopexy in the past atrophied. If that is the only problem, we can explain or counsel the patient in two ways. Number one, rule of the testes. Number two, preserving everything as it is. The reasons why you can move the testes is, it's a good evidence to say that atrophic testes can harbor malignancy and can develop malignancy in the future. That is the reason we can remove the testes which is giving any symptoms. But even though the testes is atrophied in a palpable position, compared to any normal man, we usually advise the men to do more diligent testicular self-examination so that if any change in the shape or color, we can pick up quite early and we can intervene just like any other testicular cancer protocol, ultrasound, testicular tumor walker scrub. So it is not dangerous leaving the atrophic test if it is asymptomatic. So the discussion to support leaving the test is, it's an unnecessary surgery for removing the test. Very rarely, even though the test is atrophic, the small possibility it will secrete some subtle level of small amount of testosterone. And so there is no real risk to remove if the patient is asymptomatic only for cosmetic reasons of atrophic test. Yes, if you remove the testes, it gives space for placement of uh, testicular processes so that the cosmetically patient become confident. So this is wrong answer. The answer for your question is, if the examiner asks, what will you do for the atrophic testes and is asymptomatic, and get orchidopexy, say, months back? Thus, I will counsel the patients on both the aspects of conservative management of the testes and 
immediate surgical intervention for removal i will discuss the advantages of immediate removal that the testes may harbor tumor in the future but since the testes is atrophic but even though it's a possible position we can till the point even to preserve the testes do self examination periodically if they don't develop symptom that's a depression if the patient develops symptoms option for immediate ortomy or some painkillers or the who analgesic later start from paracetamol ibuprofen non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs non opioids and then slowly to opioids etc the stay in the patient uh, reach the need for orchectomy and should be counseled that the disability the pain may not disappear even though orchectomy is done the patient should be aware of okay any other question thank you boss thank you uh, uh, uh hi mr ganesh i have a few more questions regarding torsion testers can i put it up yeah go ahead Let's discuss one at a time uh in the processes is it a bit keep the uh, delayed once the orchectomy is done for a torsion your volume is not clear just adjust your mic to you maybe but i understand the question i will question understand the question i will repeat the question and then you can change if you think it's uh, not the correct one so your question is there is a torsion if you doing an orchidopic surgery at the time if the testis is not able if you are doing orchiectomy whether we can do persist in the same time right yeah exactly yeah. okay the the answer is it all depends upon the amount of inflammation going on with that uh, testicular process is a foreign body foreign body and inflammation foreign body and infection or quite a bad mismatch because the foreign body itself will cause inflammation in the body our body will try to affect any foreign bodies our body is try to affect any transplant that's why we are trying to see the matched transplant that's why we are trying to see a family history or within family transplant our body and uh, there is no question that a uh, body like textural process will be absolutely the body will try to eject normally in a man when it's an empty scrotum there is not much blood supply other than the blood supply to the scrotum that's why the action for the rejection into the prosthetic testis is not that much the reaction or rejection can happen in various grades it's a spectrum. so the inflammation in the normal could be as minimal as the scrotal hematoma or scrotal erythema the brufen and the paracetamol six rest scrotal lesion things will improve but sometime this region or inflammatory reaction against will be quite severe that the test will try the body will need to push the prosthesis through the incision okay now for the answer to your question it's not advisable to keep the testicular during the for scrotal because there is possibility of some inflammation and inflammation going on and if you are remove the testis the testis is not viable obviously the inflammation will be on the higher side of the drum so the foreign body in uh, inflammatory one number 2 you got scrotal incision scrotal incision presenting uh, this will never happen because scrotal is easy as for our body to extrude the process and that way when you are placing this processes we always do an inguinal incision and keep it through the inguinal root we also try to close the inguinal internally with posting suture that the processes will build in position so all the more reason no way you can keep a process in the same sitting when you are exploring or possible test or torch and when you are doing an orchid okay okay uh, <clears throat> thank you my eyes again doubt is uh, in the in accounting the patient for a uh, orchidectomy or orchidoplasty 
Can we guarantee the fertility just because of that test is, uh, seems to be normal, or should we be guarded about the counseling? Okay, uh, it is always advisable to do anything 100 uh, because we don't know what's happening, we don't know potential for the opposite test. This palpable wise, the opposite test is an ultrasound but it's normal. These are the only facts we have. Sometimes that may not be enough. So how you will kill the patient is, in general, testes will maintain a man's testosterone, interest in leo, erection, ejaculation, and become a far normal. Yes, the testosterone may uh, come to touch the this may change and may come to touch, but you should in the normal clinical range. And as we all know, a partial hepatomy, the liver will grow again. After all, since there is stimulation from the follicular stimulation hormone and hormone, the normal test will go for compensatory hypopy to maintain testosterone and sperm as normal as possible. So you can explain think that there is a good possibility uh, testosterone, libido, erection, ejaculation, and uh, become father should not be affected since opposite testes. The one thing which is working against us is you need to break anti-sperm antibodies. So unfortunately, the affected testes has now got like um, decreased say, uh, inflammatory going on, you are lowering, you will be in the spermatic cord, you will be handling the test and uh, things have gone to the level that this is now not viable. So you have to do an orchiectomy. These process and cause the breathing sperm barrier. There is always a sperm blood barrier from the feet reach. The sperms or the the cells which produce the sperm, the motogonia, spermatosis, everything, are never exposed to blood. blood. They are exposed to the own blood. That's where the man produce anti-sperm antibodies. And same thing can happen. That's a different question, the fertility related discussion. So there is a small possibility the patient may develop the kind of anti that can have the opposite normalities, resulting the patient go down into an infertility ladder. So, how you are going to counsel is the question by the pad or the or the young in this procedure, there should not be any problem. Distrusted level, libido, or becoming a force of the opposite norms is, but there is always a possibility of a patient ending up in immunity due to the factors like anti sperm anti You need to uh, live the life to know how the never assure 100% everything will be normal from the infertility point of view. Uh, questions? Dr. Ananda, it may be uh, there is a problem in your uh, internet. Okay, so, but can you hear now well? Uh, uh, it's interrupted. Okay, I will adjust it, okay? Questions? No, no. Okay, if there is no other question, as we discussed, we thought of um, discussing female urology today. So you have any questions in female urology so that we can discuss those questions and then we'll go for the some small scenarios. Okay, if there is no question, yeah, go ahead, Fahad. We have to go scenario, please. Scenario, okay. Now, there are two ways by which we can run this. You may have come across all the recordings what are the urology teaching. Or you uh, going through YouTube uh, channel those and we using Ariel? Yeah, I've been doing it for the past uh, few weeks. Good. The medicine. So, so quite handy because when you are traveling, you can do it. So the YouTube please master the medicine. Uh, lots of uh, videos, uh, hundreds and hundreds. You can go to 
please and select only the uh, important video for your FS part two, the best astrology by preparation that will have all tables or scenarios that will most complete everything in total. Um, so today we are going to female urology. So female urology table along neuro urology table. So both, both scenarios may appear quite similar. It appears as if like you have discussed a scenario in female urology and neuro urology also will be discussing the same solifinas in mirror background, etc. So don't get confused on don't uh, uh, between see if that uh, are we doing scenario seems normal, etc. That is so female urology scenarios and actually it as a functional urology scenario and uh, some get even male patient in functional urology scenario. That, that, how you can get male patient? Say, for example, if there is a male patient with uh, just nocturia, it is again coming under functional urology. So male patients with voiding symptoms due to BPH obviously will be discussed in the table where we are discussing male LUTS and andrology. I think by now you will know the structure of the eight tables and what are all the two scenarios possible in each table. You should be absolutely confident in that. So what I wish you to know is there is a rare possibility that you may get a male patient in functional urology table also. They will discuss not the prostate related problems. They will select a male patient who has problems due to bladder, like overactive bladder, etc., which we can discuss further. So it's very important that you should, because it's quite rare, mostly functional urology is fully female scenarios, but if it happens, you should not get confused. You should remember, yeah, it's possible because we are discussing functional urology, not just the female urology. Now, what are all the scenarios possible? If it is a male patient, uh, the rare scenario is just storage LUTS. So you will be discussing just like a female patient, Lifestyle changes starts with uh, like you should bring in the trospium and tolteridin tablets as uh, basic medications. But obviously nowadays in 2022, we are not prescribing those tablets. You can say them for completion, but quickly go to solifenacin, mirabegron, Botox, make sure the patient prostate is not the reason for the uh, bladder uh, overactive symptoms and uh, the need for uh, urodynamics. Mostly everything is as similar to a female patient. What are the other scenarios possible? A female patient presenting with uh, pure overactive symptoms like frequency, urgency, nocturia. A female patient presenting with urinary incontinence, then you need to divide them in between stress urinary incontinence and urge urinary incontinence. As you know, the treatment for the both is entirely different for um, then we can take it in that angle. The other scenarios possible in this functional urology table is uh, urethral diverticulum and uh, the things like, uh, for example, patient presenting with uh, chronic pelvic pain syndrome. Again, this chronic pelvic pain syndrome, you can get a male patient also because that can present in the functional urology table. So we should know, first of all, overall, what are all the possibilities and what are all the scenarios where you can get in the functional urology. So are you both happy with these scenarios altogether? Or you have any questions, you think any other scenario, I missed it or any questions on this uh, topic, then we go into individual scenarios. No. Okay, so you guys have prepared for all these scenarios. Good. No. Um, how do you want to proceed? Can I just time it 10 minutes and ask the questions so that one of you can present? Maybe you can do one scenario each. That should be good for today. Is good, it okay? Uh, okay. Good. So yeah. we'll start the good. So we'll start the first scenario. Maybe Fahad can do the first scenario and Yuvraj can do the second scenario. Uh, we try to do all these sessions uh, like uh, one hour sessions. I will try to do as many sessions as possible. Already we have lost uh, 30 minutes. So we'll do two scenarios with feedback. Okay, so your time starts now. You have a 28 year old woman married for one year 
presenting with history of frequency of urination and urgency how are you going to evaluate her uh, uh, i'll see the patient in my dedicated clinic in presence of incontinence uh, uh, specialist nurse I'll uh, ensure that this uh, patient has a uh, 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 bladder diary and uh, ICIQ uh, or uh, uh, ICIQ uh, questionnaire. Uh, in the uh, uh, I on the arrival, uh, I'll uh, ask a uh, uh, nurse to do uh, urophlometry and phosphoid uh, residual and uh, urine domestic. In the history, I'll uh, clarify. Uh, uh, if the, uh, the patient uh, has a frequent onset and duration of these uh, symptoms, uh, if there is any incontinence, uh, type of incontinence, if there is a, a, a urge or a mixed or, uh, uh, or uh, stress, uh, any uh, risk factor, uh, uh, risk factor uh, including um, uh, uh, previous surgery, uh, 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 radiation therapy, uh, uh, any uh, 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 medical therapy, uh, neurological uh, uh, disease. Uh, then I ask about red flag uh, in the form of uh, uh, hematuria, uh, recurrent UTIs, stones. Uh, then uh, uh, I'll ask about a quality of life. Uh, 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 then uh, any uh, sexual and uh, uh, baseline sexual and uh, uh, bowel function, including constipation. Then, uh, uh, then I will uh, uh, proceed by uh, physical examination. I will examine uh, uh, in the examination and the presence of chevron and uh, get verbal consent. I will uh, do. Uh, uh, I will examine uh, uh, BMI. Then uh, examine the abdomen if there is uh, bulbable bladder. Uh, and uh, 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 external genitalia, uh, looking at any, uh, 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 any abnormalities. Uh, then focus neurological history, uh, perineal uh, uh, sensation, uh, bulbocavernous reflux, uh, and uh, 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 dermatomes and uh, uh, reflex of the uh, lower abdomen, then collecting all uh, this uh, formation uh, 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 and uh, uh, I'll counsel the patient uh, of uh, further management, uh, investigation and management. Okay, that's quite a comprehensive one. Um, explain how will you do bulbo cavernous reflex? Uh, uh, during uh, DRE, uh, uh, by uh, bunch the uh, uh, clitoris, uh, there is a reflux in the uh, anal, uh, uh, anal verge. So uh, uh, it's uh, uh, between uh, uh, S2, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, clarified that there is S2, S3, S4 uh, is intact. Okay. And uh, what about ICIQ questionnaire? Can you explain that? I see. Uh, uh, it's a uh, 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 questionnaire uh, for questionnaire about how uh, how to uh, how many uh, uh, how many uh, 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 voiding uh, 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 how to ma many voiding. Uh, if there is any uh, incontinence, uh, uh, incontinence type, uh, then quality of life, then uh, type of uh, incontinence, is it uh, uh, a time uh, uh, with stress or uh, if there is uh, when uh, uh, reach the uh, toilet or uh, overactive, uh, over uh, overflow incontinence. Okay, regarding the ICIQ questionnaire, make it a little bit more crisper. The easiest way, even for IPS score, for IEF score, anything is, just quickly say the components of the questionnaire are one, two, three, four, and they are measured from zero to six, zero to five, one to five, that's it. So make it very, very simple. The total score will be maximum this, minimum this. And with this, sometimes, for example, for 
male LUTS IPSS questionnaire, you can say we'll divide the patient's symptoms into mild, moderate, and severe based upon the IPSS score of this to this, this to this, this to this. So make it a little bit more uh, crisp that will happen only by presenting again and again. So now, since you have this feedback, go back and work on the ICI key questionnaire, SHIM questionnaire, or IEF questionnaire, IPSS questionnaire, prepare uh, a fixed answer. How I approach this FRCS exam is it's like an open book exam. You know all the questions, you know all the answers, you have given enough time to prepare the answers. All you have to do is prepare good model answer and present it in a crisp manner. There is no uh, question to test your knowledge or trick you, or there will be never a question which will put you into difficulty. All the questions are well prepared years and decades back. And if you go through that uh, YouTube channel, I have covered all the questions at least two to three times again and again with different students, different method of presentation, et cetera. Okay, but good answer, very good answer. So. This patient examination wise, uh, abdomen is soft, pervaginal examination is fine, no neurological deficit, reflexes were normal, you can't find any specific problems. How will you go further? Her predominant symptom is frequency of urination and urgency. Uh, I'll counsel uh, the patient about uh, conservative treatment. I'll, uh, uh, I'll uh, ask uh, uh, conservative in the form of uh, uh, restricted the fluid uh, 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 degrees uh, or uh, uh, avoided uh, uh, caffeinated drinks, uh, resolve uh, constipations uh, and uh, double voiding uh, uh, and uh, double voiding. Uh, then uh, I, I'll uh, uh, I'll do. Uh, be, uh, uh, then, uh, if uh, 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 if uh, not benefit, uh, 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 I'll uh, uh, then uh, pelvic floor muscle uh, training and uh, uh, and uh, uh, retra uh, retraining. Then, uh, uh, re uh, uh, according uh, uh, and uh, follow up after six weeks. If no benefit. Then I would uh, do uh, give him uh, uh, anticholinergics. Uh, uh, yeah, in my practice, sulfenacin five uh, milligram one is daily. Okay, so the slight changes what I will advise is uh, since you are taking a UK based uh, FRCS exams, you can bring in the nice guidelines. So I will advise the patient based upon the nice guidelines. I may have expected the GP before referring the patient to advise the lifestyle changes. So I will ask in the history specific findings like what about our fluid intake, our caffeine drinks intake, smoking history, etc. And accordingly, I will give lifestyle changes. Regarding the pelvic floor exercise, that's more useful for elderly women who have pelvic floor weakness. And she's a woman who just married only one year back. She, you have to ask a little bit more on the sexual history. Is there any dyspareunia or any other problems? And also the uh, maternal history, how many children she has and whether she was pregnant in the meantime, because even with one year of marriage, she may have a miscarriage or something in the meantime. For example, if she had history of maybe like two children or five children with normal vaginal delivery, then the role of pelvic floor exercise comes into play. But if she's only married for one year, no children, then the pelvic floor we assume to be intact and normal. And I said after your history also, the examination findings were normal. So just be careful in telling pelvic floor exercise because the examiner should not get an impression that you are giving a standard answer for everything. There should be a small change in the answer in particular to that patient. So any table when you're answering, think as if you're going to answer the, that scenario patient, not a general answer for everything. You may be traveling comfortably, but examiner will think, oh, he's telling everything generally, but I'm asking this 28 year old woman married for one year with symptoms, he's not coming to the specific patient. So keep that in mind. Otherwise the answers are good. And so in general, nice guidelines, the GP should have advised the lifestyle changes. So by the time patient comes to you, you should be aware that patient is following the lifestyle changes. The next step is starting medications. If the patient has not 
done the lifestyle changes, the best way is advise the lifestyle changes and uh, ask the patient to follow this for four weeks to see if there is any improvement so that we can prevent the patient from anticholinergic burden. But in four weeks time, if the patient is not having improvement, I will do in the same letter, the GP to start the anticholinergic tablets. Since you're all from different, different countries for the international exams, the examiner won't expect that uh, you will ask the GP to start the medication. So it's 10 minutes now, but we will discuss a few more things. Um, so the, the examiners won't ask. So don't behave as if you're really, really a UK-based person. You can say that I will start solifinacin tablets, nothing wrong in it. In fact, it's always safe to say how you practice with only the nice guidelines and few things which are must, which you should be doing even if you are out of country. So you are starting the patient on solifinacin. What advice you will give when you are starting the patient on solifinacin? Uh, I'll counsel the patient about uh, sulfinacin. It's uh, benefit about 50 to 75. And uh, I'll uh, uh, discuss with him uh, side effects, including uh, uh, including uh, dry mouth, uh, dyspepsia, constipations, uh, and uh, uh, blurred vision. Uh, and uh, uh, another rare and uh, serious uh, such anaphylaxis and uh, uh, cognitive impairment. Uh, then uh, uh, I'll uh, uh, tell him that uh, uh, I'll give him a uh, uh, trial for six weeks and uh, 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 review him after six weeks to see uh, benefit of uh, medication. Okay, slowly you have traveled uh, from a female patient and started telling, I will give him and see him. Mm -hmm. So be conscious, it's a female patient. So give her, see her. Okay, it's a simple things. Mm -hmm. Okay, patient is uh, not uh, comfortable with solifinacin. It seems to be working for her, but unfortunately the side effects of constipation and uh, dry skin is quite uncomfortable. So she stopped the tablets and she has the same symptoms. What further you can do? Uh, I'll, uh, 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 I can uh, uh, re uh, refer, uh, discuss with him another uh, choice. Uh, it's uh, Mira uh, beta three agonist, uh, Mira uh, uh, It's uh, uh, it's uh, uh, another si uh, side effects. It's uh, uh, different as uh, uh, it's uh, uh, fifty milligram on his daily. Then uh, it's uh, maybe uh, uh, side effects uh, is uh, dyspepsia, uh, palpitation, uh, hypertension, joint swelling, but uh, uh, it's uh, very uh, tolerable by uh, 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 by another patient. So uh, I'll check if the, if she happy uh, to try it. I'll give her. Okay, good. Again, uh, in this answer also, you brought uh, him at one place. As, uh, it happens because it, you're not doing with a purpose. You're not doing with, it happens automatically. The easiest thing is I will send this uh, class recording in the WhatsApp group. So when you go through, you can understand, okay, this is where I'm making the mistake and I can change from that. Your answer for Mira background is correct. Uh, since the time is 10 minutes, we will stop here. And uh, this is a good box standard basic scenario. <clears throat> you did well. All I need is a little bit more crispness so that you can bring more um, answers to the question. For example, the next question will be towards Botox. So if you've gone towards the Botox and completing the Botox also, the mark will be at least one extra. Every one, one mark extra will help you to get the total average. Okay. <clears throat> Any doubts in this scenario before we go for the next one for you, Raj? Okay. You are asked, can we have, thank you. Can we have a scenario for you? Okay. Um, Yuraj, you have a patient, uh, 55 year old, presenting with uh, history of uh, like straining to pass urine, and uh, she was referred by the GP. Otherwise, she has no medical comorbidities. How are you going to evaluate her? Yeah, I like to see the patient first in my uh, clinic with a female nurse specialist and get a detailed history and a focus examination from her. History, I'd like to ask her about her symptoms. If you specific the difficulty in voiding uh, since when it, was, uh, it had started, the duration, 
and uh, whether it's training to what is present all through the day or during any specific uh, times or episodes of the day, and uh, whether she has uh, any other wording or storage LUTS or on with her. I'd also like to ask about any uh, friends of any red flag symptoms in the past, such as hematuria, any uh, incontinence or uh, any pet wetting, and uh, uh, history of any uh, malignancy, urological malignancy or uh, any history of uh, radiotherapy or uh, uh, chemotherapy in the past, or history of uh, any other people with intervention channel in the past. And uh, general medical history regarding her uh, uh, diabetic studies and hypertension, as I said, she has no medical uh, history. And uh, I'd like to uh, proceed to a focus examination in the presence of a chaperone with a cancer and examine the abdomen uh, for look for any uh, superbic uh, bulnus or a uh, uh, descendant bladder, uh, look for any uh, loin tenderness, and uh, also look uh, <clears throat> examine the genital area to look for the urethra to uh, see whether the urethra is normal, whether there's of any uh, masses or keratinal or. Uh, uh, and uh, do a pervasive examination uh, with the uh, speculum in the lateral portion to look for any uh, uh, uterocele or uh, presence of any uterocele. Okay, that's good. Uh, one important thing you missed in the history is dyspareunia. So these patients, uh, in general, you need to ask about dyspareunia also. Don't worry about the age. Even for 60-year-old, they may have been sexually active. So you need to complete it by dyspareunia. And uh, you can quantify the pain with a kind of visual analog score that uh, zero is no pain, 10 is significant pain like uh, parturition pain or fracture pain. So you can get some quantification of the pain and uh, that will help you after starting the treatment whether the visual analog score is improving. Even though this is not discussed that much in the books, it's always nice to quantify things when you have uh, measurable units available, okay? Now, other than that, examination, why the patient had dyspareunia. So when you ask, she said, yes, I have pain during the insertion and uh, sometimes it's quite uncomfortable and she has to stop her husband from sex. And uh, examination showed uh, perineum seems to be normal. Only in the anterior vaginal wall, there is a bulge and uh, the urethral meatus seems to be normal. How are you going to proceed further? Okay, uh, like as you said, there's, in the, there's a bulge in the anterior vaginal wall. So, uh, uh, during examination, I like to uh, uh, palpate it uh, through a pervasive examination to see uh, whether there's any exclusion of any uh, fluid, urine, or any pus from at first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So you are waiting for me. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, the when you press that, uh, you are getting a kind of few more drops of urine coming out via the urethral meatus. Yes. So uh, I like to run a uh, basic investigations on. Uh, I like to get a urine dipstick, and uh, uh, if the dipstick is uh, positive for nitrous infection, and ask for a urine microscopy and a culture, and uh, like a, a basic blood work such as a serum creatinine. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, like to, uh, for imaging, uh, I like to ask for a uh, MRI of the pelvis. Okay. Uh, the investigations were okay. Her urine dipstick is normal. There is uh, blitz were normal. The MRI did show presence of urethral diverticulum. We have done a similar scenario in one of our previous YouTube videos. So today I have I can't share it in my mobile. But next time I will show you the MRI scans. So MRI scan did show a urethral diverticulum opening mid urethra present posterior to the urethra. How are you going to treat her? Well, urethral diverticulum. So I to uh, <clears throat> discuss the patient uh, uh, MRI finding, which was a uh, urethral diverticulum. I will tell her that. It's outpouching of the normal urethra protruding into the anterior vaginal wall, and uh, this is the cause for uh, uh, dyspernia and uh, staining to what. And uh, this uh, condition is just uh, to be treated surgically. So, uh, with the uh, diuretical excision and uh, urethral closure, I'd like to explain to her about the procedure, uh, the probable uh, risk of surgery with it, and the complications which could be uh, either a uh, 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 urinary tract infection, uh, recurrence of the diverticulum. It's like a possible uh, stricture or uh, further complication of symptoms such as uh, further strain, uh, difficulty in voiding because of a stricture. And on the patient is uh, <laughs> when consented, I like to uh, proceed with this, proceed for the surgery with it. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so what is the principal steps in the surgery? What is your main aim? Uh, the main aim is uh, excision of the diverticulum lump to uh, maintain the continuity of the uterus mucosa and to make sure that there is uh, no narrowing or a uh, 
it's probably our future uh, future of streamers is okay okay so how will you proceed what is the steps uh steps would be uh, uh through uh no i'm not sure of the steps i think it's uh, through anti original approach but i'm not sure about it sorry okay again I'll go through the scenarios because uh, during the day for the examiner you may be presenting only one scenario in the functional urology table so so for me if you are presenting a female with storage symptoms female with urinary incontinence and then this urethral diverticulum then if you are doing the other normal scenarios well i know that okay your age is good he has prepared well maybe diverticulum he haven't uh, finished the syllabus yet but in the actual exam you are exposed only to urethral diverticulum and uh, that will really affect your functional urology table and if you are doing well with neuro urology it can help but neuro urology is always a touch challenging for general people compared to functional urology so you should really score very well in functional urology so the prime steps are as you said we need to may, remove the diverticulum and we need to create uh, the closure of the urethra and uh, the anterior vaginal incision is a good incision so patient will be in lithotomy position and uh, patient will have a flexible stroscopy prior so that we know the extent of the uh, urethra what is happening in the bladder both urethral orifices are fine is there any bulging of the diverticulum into the trigone etc and sometimes you can even locate the urethral diverticulum quite comfortably with flexible stroscopy when patient is awake there are a lot of institutes where they do a diagnostic urethrocystoscopy before deciding for the major surgery so a diagnostic urethrocystoscopy under ga will tell us much more in detail you can use a 30 degree or 45 degree scope to look into the urethral wall mucosa look into the diverticulum uh, because sometime it may be having uh, adenocarcinoma and it may be showing through the diverticulum meatus of course mri is an excellent in investigation which will rule out any malignancy and also rule out any pus or stone formations in the diverticulum so the primary procedure is diverticulum excision and patient will be in lithotomy you should give prophylactic antibiotic because you are dealing with urine you are passing through the urethra and it's like a cystoscopy and biopsy so a simple iv gentamicin according to the patient's age one hour before the procedure is enough the procedure should be done under spinal or general anesthesia you will be doing a diagnostic urethral cystoscopy locate the urethral orifice make sure everything is fine you can use the same cystoscope to go through the vagina to see the rest of the vagina is fine anterior vaginal wall incision um locate the diverticulum excise the diverticulum in total and close the urethral mucosa with absorbable sutures and try to create a marshes flap from the labia so that it can be intervened between the sutured urethra and also the anterior vaginal wall which you are going to suture the two suture lines should not approximate each other it can be in a criss cross fashion to avoid unnecessary overlapping and marshes uh, labial fat flap will also secure your suturing after that you can uh, again examine the urethra you need to keep the patient on uh, relatively good catheters like uh, silicone catheters maybe like 14 or 16 french the catheter can be kept for two weeks which is more than enough for the healing and after which uh, catheter can be removed and uh, post void urine is measured and patient is asked to see how good is the urine stream next review will be in three months time to see that patient is voiding well without any pain and uh, local vaginal examination will tell you about the healing of your vaginal incision and uh, you will send the urethral diverticulum for histology and uh, based upon the histology it could be a benign diverticulum or if there's anything specific like uh, any malignancy possibilities you will be treating it accordingly but usually for exam purpose it will be a benign diverticulum the follow up after 3 months if the patient is comfortable then patient will be further discharged back and if there is any problem patient will come back there is always a possibility of delayed stricture as you mentioned okay Uh, I have two doubts about it. Should we mention a uh, urethrography as a diagnostic method, or just MRI as well? Uh, urethrography is one of the standard previous one. The problems or challenges with urethrography is number one, it's difficult to do. You need to have a nice catheter with a balloon filled like two ml to occlude the urethral meatus and give 
contrast and the contrast should be uh, good enough for the to enter into the diverticulum and sometimes this uh, urethrography may not give you an excellent result it, the whole investigation may become quite messy in the presence of pelvic mri which gives an excellent delineation of size shape position of the diverticulum where is the diverticular mouth where it is opening mri will give excellent information nothing less what the uh, diverticulum or urethrography will give. So urethrography, I will say to a certain extent, quite outdated. I don't think you need to bring in. And uh, should we do a peri-urethral uh, uh, dietary before removal of catheter or you can just remove the catheter at three weeks? Uh, there is no real need for peri-urethral because this is not like... Uh, uh, bladder repair. Bladder repair means uh, especially the bladder repair secondary to iatrogenic injuries or RTA. There is a big element of medical legal things going on. So you should be very careful. And uh, if the bladder repair is quite a large one, it's always nice to do a quick cystogram and make sure there is no leak and then do the trial ward without catheter. But uh, this patient, um, the chances of uh, Urethrogram giving you a meaningful finding is also not very good. Even if there is a bleak, even if the your urethral approximation or the closure is not taken well, the chances of getting a very meaningful, crystal clear, rock solid information from periurethrogram is not that excellent. So I think you can go comfortably remove the catheter, look for her void, see how comfortable she is. If she's not comfortable, just put in a catheter back and you can go for, say, MRI again, or you can go for urethrogram. Usage of pericatheter, urethrogram, and uh, the urethrogram for primary investigation for diverticulum is a little bit outdated. The, the answers may be correct in 1990s, but uh, not at this age. Okay. Uh, and, uh, how... Yeah, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, no problem. Uh, uh, can uh, uh, diagnose cystoscopy as a primary? Yani when I see the patient first time, can I do uh, yani a flexible cystoscopy or just uh, before surgery? Yeah, I mean, as I said, I will always prefer to do a diagnostic urethrocystoscopy so that the surgeon is confident about the position, place, everything. And uh, it is always better to do with uh, rigid cystoscopy. We can do rigid cystoscopy when woman is awake. So there is not necessary to put the patient under short GA. In lithotomy position, do a good rigid cystoscopy, examine the bladder and urethra quite in detail. There is nothing wrong in flexible stroscopy. A lot of people are happy with flexible stroscopy, which is more comfortable for the patient. We don't have to try lithotomy, just uh, uh, folded legs is enough. So uh, I will always advise to go for a proper diagnostic urethrocystoscopy before listing the patient for the final surgery. Yes. Okay. Uh, 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 there is one uh, uh, question before. Uh, there is uh, uh, MRI. But uh, saddle, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the verticulum all over the, uh, the urethra. Is there any uh, precaution by this uh, patient? Yeah, there is a possibility. So what's happening is diverticulum is nothing but outpouching of the mucosa through the urethral wall. If there is a space, the urethral diverticulum will be there only in one place, like for example, anterior uh, vagina. And if there is no place on the diverticulum is getting bigger, slowly it will try to wrap around the urethra. So in MRA, it will appear as if the diverticulum is going all around the urethra. But our aim is to see where is the mouth of the diverticulum so that you can excise in the mouth and remove the whole diverticulum in total. MRA is an excellent investigation. Uh, um, yeah, correct. Go ahead. How long should the patient uh, be abstinent from uh, intercourse after the procedure? Yeah, that's a very important point because uh, we have this anterior vaginal wall suture. It's just like a episiotomy suture for a woman undergoing, say, uh, transvaginal delivery, primary, etc. So I will say at least four weeks, better to avoid uh, penetrative sex because number one, it will be quite painful and uh, it can disrupt the vaginal mucosal healing. So four weeks of uh, abstinence is good. Penetrative sex, but they can have the other things. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, in, 
video which uh, done before, uh, mm -hmm. there is offer immerse, immerse violations of uh, diverticulum. Is yeah. that uh, one option or? Uh, yeah, that is one option, but uh, it, it's always nice to go through the anterior wall and exceed the diverticulum in total because there is a rare possibility of adenocarcinoma, which uh, the MRA may fail to pick up. So that's why it's always better to go anterior wall, nice exposure, remove the diverticulum in total up to the urethral mouth. With a, with a small margin, like few millimeters in total and send the diverticulum for histology. That is much better than marsupialization because all other things we, if for example, if the patient histology comes as a kind of carcinoma in situ or adenocarcinoma, then um, our procedure will be slightly inadequate. If you do a proper open under vision diverticulectomy, that gives a better clearance. Thank you. Uh, once the uh, biopsy comes as a uh, renal carcinoma, what is the follow-up for the patient? Uh, it's quite rare. I don't think you'll be asked in the exam for urethral diverticulum adenocarcinoma, but uh, the usual procedure is uh, you need to be referred for the oncologist. We need to make sure that the adequate uh, margins were removed. Then the histologist should be, histology is slightly in a very detailed manner about the positivity of the margin and in total removal of the diverticulum. So uh, usually there is nothing needs to be done. Patient needs to have a chest thorax and so I mean thorax abdomen and pelvis CT scan for completion of the staging. Usually this is therapeutic one and uh, but the oncologist will decide whether she will benefit from any further chemotherapy which is very very unlikely so usually the treatment is the diverticulum itself that's why it's always better to do the diverticulectomy in total so that you're not leaving any wall of the diverticulum which could be further resulting in like collection hematoma perineal pain etc so even though it's not a cancer follow the oncologic principles to a certain extent thank you thank you boss Good. Okay, guys. So we have exactly at 10 o'clock today for UK time. We'll try to do some more sessions. I am on call from tomorrow. Sometimes my on calls are quite good. So if my on call is going okay tomorrow, we can do a session something around 12 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The time I will confirm tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll try to do as many sessions as possible. Uh, what table you want to do tomorrow? Both yeah. of you. Uh, Any table? Bladder cancer like this. Uh. Bladder cancer? Okay. So we'll do bladder cancer tomorrow. I will go with your need so that uh, we can do all the tables in the end. But if you need something quickly, we can do. We are doing bladder cancer tomorrow. The reason why I selected the functional urology is in the WhatsApp group, there is a request to do functional urology. That's why I selected that. And uh, Mr. Sami Eladi is also available to do a session tonight. So please do utilize him. He's a wonderful teacher and just finished a FASIS exam. So his knowledge will be much more fresh. Okay. So okay. we'll complete the scenario today. Tomorrow we are doing bladder cancer. I will confirm the time tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is the topic of uh, Dr. Sami? You can put it in the WhatsApp group. He will let you know. N not uh, written. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye for both of you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.